poor Butters, this gullible goofball can't catch a break. He's either grounded for the pettiest of things. An Asian turf war, Butters, you are grounded. Or bullied into doing something he hates. But despite all the crap he's been put through, mostly by Carmen, he's maintained a naivety and innocence that's incredibly rare for a kid living in South Park. And that's exactly why Butters is my favorite character in the show. Love you too, ladies. But how did he get here? How did Butters start out as a nameless background character and then become one of the best in the entire show? So in this video, I'll be going through his entire 25 year evolution, starting from season one all the way into season 26. Also, during this video, you may just see some familiar faces pop up from the South Park YouTube community. So please go and show them some love by checking them out after this video. Butters Begins Series creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone based Butters on their dear friend and series producer Eric Staug. Trey always thinks of me probably as like a little goody two-shoes and so he wanted to base a character on me. They felt Eric was stuck in Arrested Development and acted like a big happy kid. Eric has a real Arrested Development thing going on. He's right. just, there's part of him that will never be older than 11 years old. Right. <laughs> But despite appearing in the show since its first episode, Butters rarely ever spoke and was basically a background character in the first few seasons. But after the movie premiere, Trey and Matt wanted to inject more of Eric's dorky personality into Butters' character. So they began featuring the character more frequently and found that they really enjoyed writing for him. So much so that Butters was given his very first spotlight episode in season five, fittingly titled, Butters' very own episode. Everyone knows it's Butters. Let me. This episode was nowhere near as lighthearted as its theme song, and it's easily one of the darkest in South Park's history. When Butters' mum Linda asks him to spawn his dad to find out what gift he's gotten her for their anniversary, Butters follows him all the way to a gay theater and a bathhouse. Now Butters is far too naive to actually understand what his dad Stephen was doing there, but it's safe to say his mum was pretty horrified when she found out. It must have been a sad film too because he had a bunch of tissue paper with him when he came out. But rather than take it up with Stephen and have an actual conversation about it, Lynn decides to drive Butters into a river during her mental breakdown. Fortunately for Butters, he survives, but even still, he was completely oblivious as to why she did it. Well, now that the car has come to a stop, it's safe for me to unfasten my seatbelt. And his parents' behavior only got weirder when they decided to set up Butts' alleged death as a kidnapping by blaming some Puerto Rican guy. Was he tall? Short? He was average Puerto Rican height. Thankfully, Butters did make it back home and learned a valuable lesson in not making little white lies. And you can call a lie whatever you want, but it's still a no good stinking lie. And his speech is so inspirational, it even convinces his parents to finally come clean. But perhaps too clean. I really wish I didn't know that stuff. I guess I learned that sometimes lying can be for the best. This episode served as a way to reintroduce the audience to Butters, before giving him an even bigger role in the next season. Because after they killed Kenny in the episode before this, the creators really wanted Butters to take his place as one of the main core four. You see, Trey and Matt were pretty sick of Kenny by season five. They were finding it incredibly difficult to come up with new ways of trying to kill him, and they found that Kenny in general was a bit of a limiting character. There really wasn't too much to him, aside from his muffled voice and getting killed in gruesomely creative ways. Whereas Butters was a naive, well-meaning but gullible kid who contrasted well against the pessimistic personalities of Stan, Carl and Eric. Therefore, there were far more opportunities for funny storylines with Butters in a gang instead of Kenny. But Butters' debut as a member of the Core Four didn't start out too well, mainly because his new friends kept calling him Kenny. Hey Kenny, no gosh darn it, my name's not Kenny. The boys then influence him into eating a lot of food in order to get fat. This was for one of Cartman's money-making schemes, where he heard about Jared Fogel's financial success in eating a whole lot of subways, so he wanted to do the same with Butters and the City Walk. But when Butters fails to lose the weight, the gang have to remove it with a bit of liposuction, something that his parents weren't too happy about. 
How many times have we told you never to have self-performed liposuction surgery in our house? Four times, ma'am. And what's even worse is that Carmen set Butters up by cursing out his parents on the phone by mimicking his voice. Yeah, well, Dad's being a little pussy, ma'am. This episode perfectly set up Butters' role in the group as the punching bag, already giving him far more of a stronger purpose than Kenny. This continued two episodes later in Freak Strike when the boys had Butters wear the same orange hoodie that Kenny always wore. The guys then guilt Butters into doing whatever they wanted since they tell him that Kenny would have done it, such as making him wear a prosthetic ball sack on his chin, just so he'd get on the Maury show. But by the start of episode 6, and quite abruptly, Butters was officially relieved by the boys as their fourth member. I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go, as our friend. You're just too... lame. Lame, yes. And while being cast out of the main group may seem like a step back, it was actually a blessing in disguise for Butters. Rather than suffering the fate of being their punching bag for the rest of his life, Butters got to expand his character further, and even create his very own alter ego. Professor Chaos! Professor Chaos. So, to explain the origins of Professor Chaos, I've asked my good buddy and South Park expert Johnny Two Cellos. He's got such great awesome South Park content on his channel, so I'd really recommend checking out his videos after watching this one. So take it away, Johnny. Hey, thanks for having me, Lydia. Butters may be the most innocent South Park kid, but he channels his rage into his supervillain persona, Professor Chaos. In response to being fired as the fourth member of the friend group, Butters embraces his status as an outcast and creates a tinfoil supervillain costume. Professor Chaos pulls off heinous acts such as swapping people's soup orders at a restaurant, flooding the world with a garden hose, and polluting the Earth's atmosphere with spray cans. <laughs> To help in his dastardly schemes, he recruits General Disarray, aka Dougie, to be his assistant. General Disarray's role mainly consists of reminding Chaos that every diabolical plan he comes up with was already done by the Simpsons. His mom did, did, did it. This causes Butters to snap and see everyone as Simpsons characters. Did, did, did it. Did, did, did it. But when everyone points out that the Simpsons has literally done everything, so worrying about that is pointless, Butters is cured. Think I can go back to trying to destroy the world again? Good for you! This episode was inspired by the fact that The Simpsons did beat South Park to several plot concepts. In one episode, Carmen was supposed to block out the sun, but that was canned when a writer pointed out that The Simpsons already did that, back in Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1, a great episode. Professor Chaos made his dramatic return as a rival to the Coon and Mysterion in Season 13. Professor Chaos made a perfect adversary for the Coon, but the two would join forces to take down Mysterion. Eric very predictably betrays Butters in order to look like a hero, and in the subsequent episodes of the superhero arc, Chaos remains in the Coon and Friends holding cell. And I ain't got nothing to eat! You got poop, don't you? In promotion for the South Park Fracture But Whole video game, Professor Chaos makes his return again in Season 21 in the episode Franchise Prequel. In it, Chaos makes up lies about the Coon and Friends on Facebook, spreading fake news about the gang by recruiting hundreds of minions to make up false posts about them. But the super team unites to make Mark Zuckerberg shut down Facebook, and they commit the most effective solution to stopping Professor Chaos, telling his parents. You're the one who started all this? Uh-oh. Ultimately, Butters is just a child dressing up and playing pretend, but in many ways his alter ego is a way for him to take control over his own life, which lacks a lot of control. Whether he's being bossed around by Cartman or grounded by his parents, Butters feels like he doesn't have much agency. But by donning the Professor Chaos costume, he becomes the one in control, the master of his own fate. The thing about Butters is that he's just too sweet a kid, and even when he is trying to be evil, the worst thing he can come up with is stealing erasers. I'm actually also working on my own Butters video right now. It turns out Lydia and I both love Butters, so I'll be releasing that within a couple weeks probably. Check out my channel if you want to see that. And thanks again for having me on, Lydia. Love Butters. Who doesn't? Butters and Cartman's relationship. It's no secret that Butters is a very gullible kid. As such, he's easy prey for the likes of Cartman. He's always willing to take advantage of Butters' trusting nature, and there's been plenty of times when Butters has fallen for Cartman's sadistic schemes. In Season 7's Casa Benita, Cartman convinces Butters that the apocalypse is about to happen and that he needs to hide in a bunker, so trusting Butters believes him and spends the whole of next week rebuilding society and attempting to repopulate the Earth. Now, this was all just a ruse for Cartman wanting to be invited to Carl's party instead of Butters. 
But even still, Eric went to some extreme lengths to try and convince Butters into thinking that everyone he had ever loved had died. But that's certainly not the last time Cartman messed with Butters, because in another episode, Eric tried tricking Butters into sucking his wiener. And when his dad catches them, Butters is sent straight off to gay conversion camp. Do you know why you're here at camp, Butters? Because I'm that curious? That's right. Which is ironic seeing as his dad has slept with a whole lot of men in the past, but even still, Butters has absolutely no idea what is going on and doesn't even know what bi curious means. This is confusing you right now, isn't it? Yes, it's all very confusing! But despite all this, Butters does give another great speech. This time is all about accepting yourself for who you are and not letting anyone else tell you otherwise. I wasn't confused until other people started telling me I was. Luckily, there are a few cathartic times when Cartman's bullying of Butters actually backfires. Like in Season 8's Awesome-O, when Cartman disguised himself as a robot to learn all about Butters' most embarrassing secrets. But as it turns out, it's Butters that has an embarrassing video on Cartman. I've got the whole thing on tape, even him making out with the Justin Timberlake cutout. No way. Now Eric can't drop the act until he gets his video back, but this only escalates further when Butters showcases just how awesome Awesomeo is to the world, including Hollywood. And it's here where Eric is given the task of coming up with over 1,000 film ideas, 800 of which all star Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler is trapped on an island and falls in love with a coconut. And what's hilarious is that all of the money that Eric could have earned is all donated to charity by Butters. Eventually, Eric is stolen by the military and almost killed until he lets slip a fart, finally exposing his ruse. A robot with smelly farts? That doesn't make any sense. So Butters gets some sweet payback by showing Eric's embarrassing tape to the whole town. Matt and Trey love pairing up Butters and Cartman. In an interview, Trey mentioned that if you take Butters and Cartman and put them in any scene, it works. It's this simple law which every writer knows of taking two opposites and putting them in a room together. I love anything with Cartman and Butters at the same time. It's great. And they're not wrong, these two are comedic gold. Whether Butters is helping Cartman pass into the afterlife when he thinks he's a ghost or when Butters refuses to let go of Cartman's hand even when under the threat of death. That's not even counting the time when he's forced to go undercover as a girl to infiltrate the schoolgirl's slumber party and retrieve their mystical future telling device. Welcome to our school, Margarine. Oh, thank you. In order for the charade to work, they have Butters fake his own death by standing on top of a building, saying he's gonna jump, and then they switch his body with a pig carcass. His parents are obviously utterly devastated, and in his grief, Stephen attempts to bring his son back to life by digging up his corpse and taking it to an ancient Indian burial ground. So when Butters comes home, they naturally assume that he's a demon. So they lock him up in a basement and give him humans to eat. Can I just have some spaghetti out? Butters learns all about love and life. So to break down the next stage of Butters' life, I've invited YouTuber Kitty Monk to chat all about it. She's a hilarious creator who I only just discovered a few months back, and I've already binged most of her South Park videos. So I thought you might like to hear from her and hopefully check out her channel after watching this video. So take it away, Kitty. Thanks, Lydia. Although he's a naive kid, Butters has learned a lot of valuable life lessons, especially the highs and lows of love and heartbreak, prominently shown in Season 7's Raisins. When Stan's longtime girlfriend, Wendy, breaks up with him, he falls into a deep depression. So the boys take him to a restaurant called Raisins, hosted by a bunch of prepubescent waitresses? And even though they're not enough to distract Stan, Butters falls head over heels in love with a lady called Alexis. Oh, you are such a sweetie. Come here, you. <sighs> 
he simply doesn't know that her flirting skills are simply all part of her job. Oblivious to this, he introduces his parents to Lexus at the restaurant, where they explain to him that Lexus is only entertaining him for the tips, which is confirmed when Lexus outright admits that they're not in a relationship. So that's it? Broken up now? Thus marking Utters' first ever experience with heartbreak. But while Stan is wallowing in his sorrow, Utters embraces his sadness and turns it into a profound message on bittersweet heartbreak. The only way I can feel this right now is if I felt something really good before. This inspired Stan enough to finally break out of his dark mood. It's this speech that shows Butters is a lot more mature than others give him credit for. He's able to see the rainbow through the rain, see the positives where others cannot, and it's this hopeful outlook on life that makes Butters such a fun and interesting character in South Park. Butters' next experience with girls would take a totally different turn. In season 12, Butters is bottom bitch. He's being bullied for never kissing a girl. So when Butters finds out that Sally Darson is selling kisses for $5, he happily pays for it. This exchange gives Butters a stroke of inspiration to start his own kissing business, using girls in the school with him running the finances. Little did he know he was turning into the elementary school's pimp. This only spirals when the usually clean-mouthed Butters learns that pimps like to call his employees the B-word. Oh hell dad, I got lots of girlfriends. Sally's just my bottom bitch. As it turns out, Butters is actually a pretty good boss, as far as pimps go. And his positive relationship leads to real sex workers joining his kissing company. However, when he sees a new recruit, Yolanda, getting engaged to her original pimp, Keyshawn, he sees what true love is. Butters once again learns a valuable lesson in that he doesn't have the right to be earning money off the girls. So he leaves the pimp business altogether. Honestly, I could talk about Butters for ages, but I suppose I should probably hand the video back to you now, Lydia. Bye, thanks for having me. Butters and his parents. So I want to use this section to talk about Butters' strict and over-reactionary parents, Stephen and Linda, who are always on hand to ground their son into oblivion no matter what he's done or hasn't done. Linda, do you remember why Butters is grounded? What, what did he do? No, nothing's too insignificant for his parents to ground him for, even when he's the literal hero who has saved hundreds and hundreds of lives. Like when he became the chosen one and used his power to save Imagination Land using only his mind. That only works in Imagination Land, you're grounded! It's honestly astounding to me that Butters is as nice as he is considering how he was brought up. As we already mentioned, his mother tried to drown him and then lock him up in a basement and feed him humans, not forgetting the time they tried to sell him to Paris Hilton for $250 million. Dad, I, I love you. Please don't sell me to Paris Hilton. Hilton, who is a notorious pet owner, could have killed Butters, and if it wasn't for Mr. Slave of all people, he could have met his gruesome end. And instead of being happy that their little boys returned to them, they ground him for losing them the $250 million. I'm a very bad old bear. You're a grounded old bear. And yes, it is absolutely hilarious, but you can't help but feel bad for him. If you can raise the $250 million yourself, you can stay. Now, the origin for his overbearing parents' behavior could be explained in season 16, when Buds' grandma comes to visit. It turns out that Grandma Scotch is the ultimate bully to Butters, making his parents look like saints in comparison. Every moment that Butters is left alone with Granny, she aggressively bullies him both mentally and physically, like stabbing his leg with a fork. And it seems that not even Professor Chaos can conquer Granny. When he confronts her in the Chaos costume, she has her very own supervillain costume too, and gives him gummy bears. Gummy bears! 
In the same episode, Butters also becomes the face of an anti-bullying campaign, leading him onto Dr. Oz's show. However, Dr. Oz's questions about the bullying trigger him so much, he begins violently attacking the TV show host, showing just how deeply disturbed Butters is, all thanks to his childhood full of abuse. But this outburst at least gives Butters some perspective as to what it was like to be a bully, and he was able to explain to his grandma that he now had an understanding of her, while also finding comfort that he will definitely outlive her. And you'll die. Being nothing but you. Even though he came from a family of bullies, Butters refuses to stoop down to their level and become one himself. He is the antithesis of Eric, who will literally cook and feed you to your own parents if you so much as slight him. But Butters, he'll turn every cheek in his body just to rise above the hate every time. Butters takes on modern South Park. So to talk about what Butters has been up to more recently in South Park, I've asked my good friend Blooms to help me out. Blooms is a walking, talking South Park encyclopedia, so take it away, Blooms. Thank you very much, Lydia. So entering the show's second decade, Butters still had his trademark naive charm, but the creators decided that they also wanted to give him a bit of an edge. In season 14's The Tale of Scrody McBooger Balls, the boys write the most disgusting book imaginable, a book so vile that it literally causes the reader to violently throw up. When the parents eventually confront the boys, they decide to blame it all on Butters and say that he wrote the book because they think they're gonna get in trouble. Yeah, I barely even remember it, but I know I did. This immediately backfires when the book is a massive hit and Butters becomes worldwide famous. Unlike all the other times when the gang uses Butters for their own selfish deeds, Butters decides to turn it around on them and take full advantage of his new fame. Let me tell you something, fellas! You always take advantage of me! He even decides to write a much-anticipated sequel, and when this book with a scatological obsession is finally released, it's an instant hit. Although Butters' writing was far tamer than the original book, And the poop and the pee lived happily ever after. The end. Readers still find a way to read far too deeply into it and look for messages where there aren't any. I mean, the name of the book is The Poop That Took a Pee. I mean, we're not talking about Shakespeare here. However, when his book ends up causing someone to shoot the Kardashians, Butters is absolutely crushed. I mean, Kim Kardashian was the one celebrity he really wanted to meet. But as soon as I'm not grounded anymore, I'm hoping to meet Kim Kardashian. I want to jump out of your belly. So at this point, it seems like Butter's edge was beginning to get more and more defined. He was not only standing up to his friends, but his darker side, you know, outside of Professor Chaos, took him to new lengths. He started having angry outbursts at kids at school for no reason, with his father reasoning that it was because Butters was developing something called Hapahui Apahoa. <laughs> I God. Hawahui <laughs> God damn. Hapahui Apaloha. I think that was right. Sorry. Because of this, Butters was advised to journey back to his birthland of Hawaii, but instead of finding relatives with any deep spiritual significance, he found that his family were actually just a bunch of glorified tourists. And as it turns out, his anger issues actually all stemmed from being jealous of Ben Affleck back in 2012. You shouldn't be able to be good looking and be with Jennifer Lopez and be a good director! But when he realizes that Affleck was married to Jennifer Garner at the time and not J-Lo, he's back to his old happy self again. He's just married to Jennifer Garner? Oh my gosh, I feel so much better! Let's just hope that no one updates him on J-Lo's current relationship status. Sadly, it seems that Butters has long forgotten his lesson on heartbreak from season seven. But to his credit, this time it was at least over an actual relationship. In season 20, his long distance girlfriend Charlotte breaks up with him and the rage that he feels pushes him to protest against the girls the only way he could by sticking his wiener out. <laughs> this storyline continued over into the next episode, where Butters leads a pro-men charge against the girls of the school. This marks a very interesting shift, where it's Butters that has taken the antagonist role and Cartman is the one who tries to defuse the conflict. Never thought I would say that sentence. In the more recent seasons, they've paired him with Cartman again to sell vapes to children. Butters, you understand this stuff is an epidemic at our school? Yeah, and at five bucks a pop, we're gonna be rich! And in season 23, Butters faces the curse of a mummy. There's even an oddly sweet episode where Butters becomes friends with Father Maxie. 
In this episode, Butters feels bad about the jokes that are constantly thrown at Maxie about the many disturbing cases of abusive priests. And as uncomfortable as the idea of a boy becoming friends with a priest is to everyone, Butters and Father Maxie somehow make it work as a pretty normal friendship. And finally, most recently, Butters has gotten a little too excited about St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do anything wrong, honest! Oh, Butters. Even after all he's been through, he still has a lot of growing up to do. Well, that's it for me. Thank you to Lydia for having me on, and now back to her beautiful British voice. Thanks so much, Blooms. And I thought I mentioned that most recently in season 26, we get another brilliant episode, which has a title that I definitely can't say because YouTube will demonetize me again. But even still, we got another Butters and Cartman episode. In it, Butters gets a job at an ice cream parlor, and when Cartman finds out, he wants in. But in typical Eric fashion, he slacks off while Butters is forced to do all of the work on his own. Yeah, young people can just ask for a mental health day and employers can't deny them. It's my mental health day. Eric, always the victim, is sick of the big man taking his time and money. So he decides to start his own hot dog business using Butters' money, of course. And after Eric has literally spent every single dime that Butters has earned, he gives up before it even starts up. But not wanting to lose everything, Butters rolls up his sleeves and runs the entire business himself and successfully, cooking, cleaning, serving customers, and of course, Eric predictably takes credit for everything. But Butters being Butters has learned a lot of being a victim to too many of Eric's schemes. And he shrewdly takes over the business himself. He franchises it and even evicts Cartman out of his hot dog house. It was a real twist on the formula, and after years of abuse, Butters finally got one up on Eric, and it was oh so glorious and tasty to see. Butters all grown up. In the recent South Park COVID specials, it was amazing to see the gang as fully grown adults, but poor old Butters definitely drew the short straw. In the three-part special, Stan and Carl find out that they need Kenny's right-hand man, Victor Chaos, in order to operate the time travel machine. But the only problem is, is that Victor Chaos is locked up in the South Park Mental Asylum. Well, hey, fellas! Butters. You see, when the pandemic happened, Butters' overprotective parents kept him in his room 24-7, even when their stay-at-home orders were lifted. Then one day, while he was still grounded, his parents went to watch a movie never to return again. And so Paul Butters remained in his room for over 16 years. And Butters only had one thing to keep him company, learning about NFTs, before going out in public finally and spending all his time advertising them. This led him into becoming known as Victor Chaos, and he was eventually locked up in the asylum for quote-unquote unspeakable actions that quote-unquote destroyed many lives. And to be honest, it did make a whole lot of sense that out of anyone, it was Butters that fell for the NFT grind shtick. I mean, he's been manipulated by his parents, his friends, and his bloody grandma for over his entire life. Anyway, despite becoming the diabolical supervillain that he's always dreamt of becoming, Stan and Carl break him out of the asylum to help them with their time machine. But Cartman, with a much happier life than everyone else, tries to get Butters to sell NFTs to the other workers on the time machine in order to cause a distraction. Thankfully, Stan and Carl's mission to alter the future was a huge success, and in their new future timeline, Butts' parents are far less restrictive, thus making his adult life much better as he became the manager of Applebee's. So everyone's life is a lot, lot happier. Apart from Cartman's. So let us know in the comments what your favourite Butters moment is. And if you'd like to see a timeline from any other South Park character, as I love talking about this show. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.